You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. La, 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 la. Yes, it is. Mr. Aiken, my name is Rob, and this is episode seven, seven, Don't you seven. dare call me Mr. Aiken. Uh, you're right. It's much too respectful? Yes. Much, <laughs> okay. much too respectful. We'll just call you Paul. We'll call you P. You call me P. You call me T. Just don't call me TT or PP. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be tempting now that you said that. <laughs> I don't know if I can I refrain. I sure hope not. <laughs> I'll try not to do it on air. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for everybody who calls in with questions, who uh, sucks it up, and particularly those that might be a little nervous about it. And we'd love to hear from you. We just got a really great accent from a guy in Australia. Of course, he was Australian. So it actually worked really, really well. Looking forward to playing that question here a little bit later. Yeah, we are. We are. We got some good ones. Yeah. I, Fired you know, up. You know how we know we have good ones? Because Paul's excited about the questions. I'm not excited anymore because you said that. Oh, whatever. Just kidding. PP. All right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Gosh, I instantly regret that joke. <laughs> well, on that bombshell, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for listening to another show. Very excited, actually, for the next three shows. I think they'll be very good. And if you're like me and you listen to a lot of podcasts, you know that some podcasts can just drone on and drone on and drone on and oftentimes <laughs> yes, they can you become very disappointed in the quality of this show well luckily for you you're not gonna have that problem here for the next three shows um so not and it's something that i think about all the time by the way because i want to make these shows as fun and engaging as possible while also providing good information that is the goal um also just want to say thank you to all of the youtube comments that have been coming in they have been coming in so much with such veracity that they have actually sparked the attention of one of the Facebook drone groups. And it was really funny because people have been arguing about who is more knowledgeable, me or John McBride, <laughs> which has been entertaining for both of us. Pissing contest. <laughs> what I say about the pee-pee jokes. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> A little different. All right. So <laughs> anyway... Um, it's been really entertaining and I just want to say thank you. Um, but really guys, I also appreciate the reviews that you do write in. We do read them. Um, if you haven't left a review, just go to iTunes, uh, Stitcher or our podcast or Facebook and leave us a review and let us know what you think. But anyway, um, let's move on to today's sponsor, which is going to be Colorado drone chargers. If you're like me and you need to charge a lot of batteries at once. In fact, you'll be seeing a lot of these chargers at the Drone You Fly In, which is coming up here August 2nd through 5th in Albuquerque, New Mexico, at the Balloon Museum and Balloon Fiesta Field. We're very, very excited about that. Sponsored by the Balloon Museum. Uh, yeah, you're going to be seeing a lot of them. And if you need to charge a lot of batteries at just one time, not sequentially, or excuse me, not, uh, yeah, not sequentially, but all at once, um, and I could even just screwed up that definition because I'm so excited and giddy like a little Labrador. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Uh, but anyway, um, you're going to be seeing a lot of them. And if you want a discount on one of those units, use discount code DRONEU8 so that you that way you can keep flying. Keep those batteries charging, cycling every single hour. It really makes five batteries possible for any situation because mm -hmm. you can keep cycling and cycling and cycling That's and right. cycling. And please use the link down below. We appreciate when you do that. We definitely appreciate you. All right, they're tired of hearing me yap. Let's hear the question. G'day, it's John here from Australia. I've um, just got a question uh, to ask you um, before I throw another shrimp on the barbie. By the way, we call them prawns down here. But anyway, my question's around sensors for, for drones. Um, currently looking at doing infrastructure inspections, bridges and towers and other steel structures. We're looking at using the uh, Phantom 4 Pro at the moment because it's got the 20 megapixel sensor on it, um, which is good just to sort of suck and see how we go. And later on, looking at going to the Matrice 210. But just looking at the sensors, they're a little confused. Um, the Z30 looks like a fantastic uh, zoom camera, but it's only 2 megapixel. Um, so I'm a bit confused sort of how that works and if it's going to be sufficient. Um, other 
rival companies out there are using uh, 40 megapixel sensors. So they have a look at their photos later on the laptop and then zoom in on them and sort of do their, their double checking. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see which way to go because if I need to go to a 40 megapixel sensor, um, then I might be have to look at a different sort of drone or something, maybe a 600, I'm not too sure. So um, yeah, just a few questions around that. If you can help out, that'd be fantastic. So thanks very much, mates. Talk to you soon. Mm. Wow. Thank you, John. Love wow. it. Appreciate it. I would love some prawns. They call them prawns pretty much everywhere else other than the United States, too. You know, how come in some restaurants you see shrimp and prawns? That's just because they're idiots. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, yeah. Someone has told me, someone, and I don't know if this is true, but someone has told me, they're like, well, prawns are a little bigger. And you're like, I've heard that. And actually, that was something that was kind of coming to mind like maybe wonder, it's true maybe it's not either way it's still going in my belly and out my bowl <sighs> <laughs> it's not All gonna right. make a difference what it's called he's in a mood All he's right. in a mood oh you hush you hush. ask dot com if you have a question <laughs> like john did and hopefully it won't lead to prawns comments like anyway Let's that. continue on here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if the glove fits, the glove fits. All right, where do we get started here? Z30, why is it only a two megapixel sensor? Very good question. Well, in order to fit a camera and a lens inside of one small body on a gimbal that can be actually balanced beneath a drone that can carry a three to six pound, seven pound payload, you're really limited in size. Because the larger the lens would equate to the larger the sensor, at least if we're talking about a combination of parts here to fit into one little body, to be balanced on a gimbal, to fit below a drone, to be adequate for a payload. So since we have this limitation in payload, right, let's say it's like six, seven pounds, and we're going to fit two cameras on this drone. So now we're talking on two to three pounds, okay? Two to three pounds if I'm able to zoom in, I think I got to check the Z30. I want to say it's a 300 millimeter zoom. So the DJI Z30, which runs for $8,999. Chump so change? It is chump change. Um, where is it? I'm, Not really. It is. So it's a 1 over 2 eighths inch CMOS sensor, effective pixels 2.1. It's got a 30 times optical zoom from f1.6 to f4.7. Um, oh, excuse me. Minimum working distance is from 10 millimeters to 1,200 millimeters away. Hmm. Interesting. Now, that being said, going back to what I was saying, if we're trying to fit that huge lens and the sensor inside of one body so that we don't have a detachable lens, we really have a lot to fit in a small package. Now, here's the thing. If I've got this big lens, that lens has to move inside of that body. So if I want a bigger sensor than what I currently have, I need a bigger lens to be able to match those two. Well, when I have a bigger sensor and a bigger lens, now I have a bigger body. Now I'm wondering, well, how do I balance that on a gimbal and then put that in someone's hands? Now, it, it makes sense if you understand basic camera technology that in order to fit um, in a lens mm -hmm. on a camera and put it in the sky, the sensor is going to be really small. If I were to take a 20 megapixel sensor, like the, the one inch sensor here, and try to do the same thing, it's going to be huge. It's going to be massive. Right. Very, very, very large. Now, is it possible to use a bigger sensor? Totally. Um, absolutely. So he threw out the 40 megapixel. So, yeah, I think he's talking about a Sony camera there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because with, that's without a zoom, obviously, right? Yes, that is without a zoom. Now, he was talking about using a Phantom 4 Pro versus an M210 and then a 40 megapixel camera. The only way he's getting a 40 megapixel camera is if he goes up to M600, S1000, uh, the Terret mm -hmm. uh, that I showed you, the X8. Yep. Very cool. Um, if he's doing that, he's going to have to get a separate gimbal. He's totally out of the woodwork here. So, so is that custom at that point? That is custom at that point, okay. yes. So as far as doing lots of mapping and mission jobs, you know, 
you're going to have a larger sensor. This is why it's so important to just learn how to fly close to things. I mean, it's, it's just right. so, 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 so important. And people will be like, well, what about power lines? Well, just don't fly between power lines and don't fly over them in between them. But when it comes to power lines, you know, these cameras are supposed to give us more detail and depth and you get pretty incredible detail. I mean, there's a video on our on our Facebook page, I don't think I uploaded it to YouTube. I could upload it to YouTube, where I showed people what the Z30 really does, and it's pretty cool. In fact, I'm just going to upload this bees. So for his purposes, which is the infrastructure inspections, what do you recommend? Because he kind of threw all kinds of options out I there. I think in his that question. the Z30, if he's actually doing infrastructure inspections, is actually a very good camera to have, and the reason is. Um, is because you can really zoom in and get really good detail on cracks and you can get better detail in general. When it comes to mapping, utilizing the Z30 and another sensor is not really going to give him the results that he's looking for. Okay. Um, so he doesn't need the extra megapixels um, to do the inspections. The zoom is going to be a better resource for him for yes. that particular application. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, Zoom is definitely going to be a better application. I want to make sure I understand your, your, your question correctly because I was looking for that video. So you're saying he'd be in a better position for infrastructure inspections if he had the Z30. Correct. Yes, he would. Yes, over using something like a 40 megapixel camera because it's going that's to be, what he's asking is as which far as one is better. scaling your business, uh -huh. the Z30 is going to be way better. Okay. The uh, Now, as far as quality is concerned, having, a, a, say, a Sony a7R Mark II with a 250-millimeter lens on it um, balanced on a Ronin MX under an M600 is definitely going to provide way better results. There's no sure. doubt about that. But, but the ability to transport that vehicle, take it out, and use it from job to job to job, and then get everything working properly. Every, the You're right, going to get a Sprinter van to start with. Yeah, get a John McBride van first. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so... Which is something we talked about a long time is, ago. It is, yeah, and at some point we probably will. Either that or a trailer. But the question then becomes, so obviously that setup that you described is going to be the best quality. But does he really need that to do the kind of inspection work that he's talking about in his question. Well, I think it's difficult to really answer that because we don't know what the deliverable is to the client itself. If they're just, you know, pulling a drone base here and they're like, hey, we just need like 10 pictures along the uh, the base of the bridge to make sure that there's no uh, stress fractures, sure. then, you know, I'm sure Z30 is going to be fine. But if they're like, hey, we need to map this whole bridge so that we can calculate the volume between the cracks and how many cracks there are and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he's probably going to need something a little bit better. Then go um, to the bigger it's side. It's just difficult to really understand and really to say, you know, it... But that's okay the, because the, we want to just give sort of an idea of what the different options are and when yes. those applications would be effective. Yes. The frame of Perfect. mind here is that how many jobs are you doing? Because if you're just doing one big job and you're doing that job for a couple days a week, um, like this bridge inspection and whatnot, then yeah, having the bigger bird makes sense. But if you're doing a lot of little jobs, you've got to think about how can you scale your company and your systems because a business is exactly that, a system of systems. Um, and if you're not able to – Go what, ahead. What you said that was deep. That's deep. I, I get a system deep. of systems. Yes, you do. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, Sorry. Um, anyway, in creating these systems, an M210 is going to provide you a better avenue to more effectively go from job to job, get the deliverables that you need in a short time to do it. The much larger bird is going to cost you a lot more money. Sure. It is going to cost you a lot more time. It is going to cost you a lot more time in getting it from place to place. It's going to cost you a lot of time of getting it working from place to place. Then it's going to cost you a lot of time in getting the deliverables from that camera to where you need them. Whereas an M210 really makes all that a lot easier. That makes sense. That's why people keep buying DJI stuff because this, you know, a drone with dual cameras, VTXing down to the ground, uh, has been around for a while. It's been around for probably three years. You could do it with an S1000 or an M600. John McBride did it two years ago. Um, it's just having a system that's convenient, easy to use, portable. Uh, you can travel with it. It works every time you pull it out of the box type thing. Yeah. And that's that's really the 210. That's why. And it's taken half a year to get to that point. Yeah. You know, they announced the 210 in February of last year. It finally came out in Q3. And, and they've been working out the kinks ever since. Ever since. Yeah. Yeah. And it's now April. Right. Yeah, that's what resources will do for you. I mean, and of course, they're using the public and the consumer as one of their resources, right, for feedback. And not True. that that's a new thing. And don't Seems even... to be an ever-growing okay thing. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's probably true. 
But uh, no, I hope that's helpful I, to, to John. I think um, it should answer his question, give him some ideas um, as he's contemplating all the different sensors and how to pick the right one for what you're trying to do with your business. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think cool. that I think we answered his question pretty fairly well. Fairly well. If not, let us know. Yeah, definitely let us know. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for our question today. Uh, I think we answered his question. All in all, Phantom 4 Pro is going to be awesome. You can fly close, still get great detail. When it comes to infrastructure inspections, the deliverable is going to help you determine what drone is best for you. In most cases, the 210 is probably great. If you really need high-end detail work, then you're going to need something better than that. Um, also, when you're doing mapping, the reason a Phantom 4 Pro works really, really well in doing your regular mapping missions, your orbitals, your obliques, and then getting close and doing those is that the sensor stays the same, the sensor size stays the same, the zoom stays the same. In addition, everything else about the camera stays the same, so it's a lot easier for um, any mapping processing software to to really uh, rectify or stitch those images together. As soon as you implement different variables of zoom, so if you shoot everything at a 24 millimeter equivalent and then go to a 70 millimeter equivalent, photogrammetry software has issues with that as of right now based on my experience. So if he's creating mapping and models, he's got to stick to one camera and move forward. If he is just simply looking for inspection work, just little photos here and there, boom, 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 done, out the door, I think the M210 is his solution. And there is my recap. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You, mofos. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs>